Generally, when we think of forging materials, it's anything that's a metal. Now, about 80% of the elements on the periodic table are metals, and almost all of those could be forged, although most of the materials that are forged are alloys of things we think of as more commonly as, as structural uh, materials. Uh, steel, obviously made from iron and uh, carbon and manganese, aluminum and its alloys, magnesium and its alloys, copper and its alloys, titanium and its alloys. Um, those are all structural materials, all forged at different temperatures, all forged in different uh, slight variations of the forging process. And then as we go up in temperature, we go to uh, ferrous materials that have additions of chrome and nickel uh, become stainless steels. Uh, some of them become higher temperature uh, stainless steels. Then we go on to nickel-based alloys, uh, nickel, cobalt, molybdenum, tungsten, other things that are added together to make high temperature materials, even refractory materials that are designed to operate where they're literally glowing red hot. All of these things can be forged. Now, the, the higher the temperature and the tougher those alloys, the more difficult it is to forge them. The bigger the equipment that's needed, the uh, shorter the die life, the more expensive it's going to be. So why would you want to make your product out of one of these very expensive materials? Um, it really comes down to what are the, the uh, requirements in service. Um, you know, is it in a severe high temperature uh, application? Uh, is it something that has to have the absolute durability uh, and robustness that a forging will give you so that it just isn't going to fail in, in that service condition? The end use really dictates what material is to be used and what forging process to use.